On January 24, 1925, Elizabeth Murray Tallchief was born. Her Indian name is Wazatumba, meaning woman of two worlds. Known as Betty Marie by her family, she was given birth to in Fairfax, Oklahoma on the Osage Indian Reservation. Her mother was Ruth Mary Potter Tallchief, a woman of Scottish and Irish ancestry. Her father was Alexander Joseph Tallchief, an Osage Indian tribal chief. Her sister's name is Marjorie Tallchief, and her sister would follow her footsteps. Marie began ballet lessons at the age of three and frequently performed before civic organizations in Massage County. In 1933, at the age of eight, Marie and her family moved to Los Angeles. Since she and her sister had exhausted the training resources in Oklahoma, Tallchief's mother wanted her daughters to study at a fine dance school. Tallchief was trained by Ernest Belcher. He saw Marie's potential and fixed the poor habits retained from past training. After several years with Belcher, in 1936, Maria moved to a dance school run by Madame Nijinsky. In her autobiography, Maria Tallchief, America's Prime Ballerina in 1997, she wrote of her childhood. I was a good student and fit in the Sacred Heart, a Catholic school. But in many ways, I was a typical Indian girl, shy, docile, introverted. I loved being outdoors and spent most of my time wandering around my big front yard where there was an old swing in a garden. I also rambled around the grounds of our summer college hunting for arrowheads in the grass. Finding one made me shiver with excitement. Mostly, I longed to be in the pasture running around where the horses were. Maria attended Beverly Vista High School where she faced frequent taunting. She remarks, her high school experience saying, some of the students made fun of my last name, pretending they didn't understand it, it was tall or chief. A few made war whoops whenever they saw me and asked why I didn't wear feathers or if my father took scalps. After a while, they became accustomed to me, but the experience was painful. Eventually, I turned the spelling of my last name into one word. Everything in school was in strict alphabetical order and I wanted to avoid confusion. In the late 1930s, while still in high school, Tall Chief auditioned for the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo. Because she had not finished high school, the director wanted her to finish first before professionally dancing. After high school, Maria moved to New York City to pursue dance. There, she was hired by the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo. It was also around this time that she became professionally known as Maria Tall Chief, combining the two parts of her Indian name. This is where she began to dance for a number of productions run by George Balanchine. In 1947, she became the first prima ballerina of the New York City Ballet, a title that she will hold for the next 13 years. That same year, Tall Chief became the first American to dance with the Paris Opera Ballet. In addition to her work with the New York City Ballet and the Paris Opera Ballet, she was a guest performer with the American Ballet Theatre. With each new company she joined, Talchi's heritage was greeted with skepticism. She was not Russian or European or even white American. Each time she had to prove herself, but it did not take long for her talent, dedication, and artistic ability to win out. The public fell in love with Maria Talchi. Talchi was called upon to dance as many as eight performances each week, and her legend grew. Maria Tallchief quickly became a popular figure in ballet, performing in productions such as Orpheus, Scotch Symphony, Miss Julie, Firebird, and The Nutcracker, performing as the Sugar Plum Fairy. Maria retired in 1965, surprising the world. After retirement, Maria Tallchief worked with the Lyric Opera Ballet and the Chicago City Ballet, which she and her sister, Marjorie, who was also an acclaimed dancer, helped found. She also served as an honorary artistic advisor to the Chicago Festival Ballet. During her career, Maria met and became involved with the famed choreographer George Balanchine. 
The couple wed in 1946 and separated in 1951. While their marriage was short-lived, the two worked well together. They had no children. In 1956, Marie married her second husband, Henry Buzz Passion. This marriage lasted until he died in 2003. They had one daughter, Elise Passion, born in 1959. In addition to wide fame, Tall Chief earned strong reviews from critics for her technical precision, musicality, and strength. In 1996, Tall Chief became one of the only five artists to receive the Kennedy Center Honors for their artistic contributions in the United States. That same year, the dancer was inducted into the National Women's Hall of Fame. On March 12, 1998, Chicago Mayor Richard M. Daley proclaimed Maria Tall Chief is recognized throughout the world as one of the first and greatest American trained ballet dancers of the international importance. In 1999, Tall Chief was awarded the National Medal of Arts, the highest award given to artists and art patrons by the U.S. government, which honors individuals who are deserving of special recognition by reason of their outstanding contributions to the excellent growth support and availability of the arts in the United States. President Clinton himself even stated, Marie Tall Chief took what had been a European art form and made it American's own. How fitting that a Native American woman would do that. She even has a statue of her and four of the Native American ballerinas in Tulsa, Oklahoma called the Five Moons. At 88 years old, Maria Tall Chief died on April 11, 2013 in Chicago, Illinois. She was survived by her daughter, Elise Passion, her sister and fellow ballerina, Marjorie Tall Chief, and two grandchildren. Maria is not only one of America's first prima ballerinas, but also the first Native American ballerina. Following her mother's death, Passion spoke about her legacy as a Native American ballet dancer, teacher, and artistic director. My mother was a ballet legend. He was proud of her Osage heritage. Her dynamic presence lit up the room. I will miss her passion, commitment to her art, and devotion to her family. She raised the bar high and strove for excellence in everything she did. Tall Chief was a trailblazer for Native Americans in the world of ballet. She was proud of her Native American heritage and refused to change her name. If you look at the life of Marie Tall Chief, she truly is a woman of two worlds. She is an Osage Indian and a legendary prima ballerina.